You know, Muhammad Ali, the great heavyweight boxing champion who referred to himself as the greatest, uh, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Many of you young ones won't remember that, but he was one of the most entertaining fighters to ever watch. Kept always saying he was the greatest. He was on a plane once and the plane hit turbulence. And so the commander or the, the captain of the plane, the pilot, ordered everybody to fasten their seat belts. And everybody complied except Muhammad Ali. So the flight attendant came over to him and said, Sir, please fasten your seat belt. To which he said, Superman don't need no seat belt. And she said to him, Superman don't need no airplane either. Very recently, very recently, two of the best known football players in the world, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi, were being interviewed. And Ronaldo was telling the interviewer he believed that God sent him into the world to teach the world and show the world how to play football. So the interviewer looked at Lionel Messi and asked him what he thought of the comment. Messi paused and said, I don't remember sending him. <clears throat> a corporal once said to Winston Churchill, I want you to know I am a self-made man. Churchill said, you have just relieved God of a very solemn responsibility. We like to think we are omnipotent. We like to think we know so much. We go through life pretending more than being actual and real. We define ourselves by what we do. That's what existentialism is all about. We define ourselves by what we feel and what we do. But we are to define ourselves with our essence, what we were meant to be, human beings. Then you define the doings. Oh Lord our God, Lord how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you're mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. You made him a little lower than heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler, ruler over all the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When you talk about the glory above the heavens, the incredible planetary planets in motion, and then you come to see a little baby, out of the mouths of babes you have ordained praise. You see, a child can look with marvelous adornment at the sunset or the sunrise. You can sit in a porch at night and watch a beautiful sunset and be in awe, but the sun will never repay the compliment. The sun will never look at you in awe and say, my goodness, how amazing this human being is. There's something about being human that inspires us with awesome wonder and yet has within us still the capacity to do the most dastardly things you can ever imagine. We can go to unlimited evil or we can go to a perpetual novelty in the wonders for which God has created us. What does it mean to be human? That's the question I wish to answer. Years ago, 17 years ago in the year 2000, the former Soviet Union was emptying out its prisons and political prisoners were being released. One of them was a man by the name of Andres Thomas, who was a Hungarian. Andres Thomas had spent 55 years in Soviet captivity. He was captured when he was 20 and was now being released at age 75. But he was talking nonsense, gibberish, and they were going to execute him. But somebody said, at least bring a psychiatrist to test him out. 
maybe he's saying something that we don't understand. And they brought a Hungarian psychiatrist to examine him for a few days. And the psychiatrist said, the man is not insane. He's speaking an old Hungarian dialect. If anything, you have nearly driven him to insanity. Release him to us. We will take him back and make him well. And the Soviets signed off on his release. And the man was put into a wheelchair, Andrei Stamas. So I'm always marvel at that name, two biblical names from Andrew and from Thomas. You know, they put him in that wheelchair and they're wheeling him out. And you, if you have not read the story, you would never guess what was his first request. He turned back to the psychiatrist and said, can you please give me a mirror? I have not seen my face in 55 years. So he came under such agility and such strength and such daring courage to be in that war and they'd worn him out to a wizened old man now so fragile they gave him that mirror and he looked at the mirror and it lasted all of about two seconds he looked at it and he turned the mirror down on his face put his face in his hands and sobbed uncontrollably he had forgotten what he looked like they had wiped out any resemblance of what he was as a strong young man over half a century before that. So I asked myself this question, is there a mirror for the soul? Is there something that reveals to us what you were intended to look like? What you were intended to be like? Or are we sort of on the high seas without chart or compass Nothing to navigate, nothing to help us understand where we are in this thing we call life. The Bible gives us profound answers in simple, not simplistic, in simple ways with profound implications. The first is this. It talks about as us being the product not of the random collocation of atoms, but of the will of a divine creator. We are part of the glory of creation. He said his glory above the heavens, but man becomes that supreme expression, mankind and womankind, in whom he plants that image. Creation. The moment you know that life has a story, and life has an author, you know there is a plot, you know there is a plan. You can't just say you are here totally by accident. 